It's amazing how the aviation industry has transformed in just under 100 years since the famous Wrights brothers, Wilbur and Orville, went on the first motor-operated aircraft flight in 1903. Since then, we've seen the birth of the global aviation industry, cargo planes, fighter jets, and even rockets that enter space. But whilst Wilbur and Orville were highly regarded as the first people to create a motor-operated aircraft, they weren't the first pioneers of the aviation industry. And in fact, they weren't the first people to fly an aircraft. A man by the name of Abbas ibn Furnas, an Arab inventor from this region, invented and flew a glider in 800 AD, making him the first man to fly an aircraft that we know of. If only he could know what an impact his inventions had. Although it didn't turn out so well for everyone. For my aviation journey, I'm going to need some top advice. So I'm calling upon the best of the best, and who could be better than Will Cambridge, Red 2 of the Red Arrows. So I think the most important thing with flying um, is really just to enjoy it, because especially the way you're doing it, you're getting right at the, right at the basic level. Uh, and then looking to learn as you go through, you have to enjoy it. Uh, you've got to work hard as well, so you've really got to um, you know, focus on what you're trying to do. Um, and a lot of it is um, what we call perishable skills in flying. So if you take a lot of time between flights, what you learn in that one flight, you'll then have to reload for your second flight. So if you can keep the currency of flying fairly high, then that will uh, prevent your skills from perishing. I've always been fascinated and inspired by the pioneers of aviation. Often they would take off without even knowing how to land the plane and just fly into a canopy of a forest in order to stop. But the work they did back then has transformed how we travel today. So I've taken the plunge and decided I'm going to learn how to fly an aeroplane. And I've been researching what's the best and quickest way to learn how to fly a plane. And I found Al Jazeera Aviation Club teaches the light sports aircraft license in Rasakama. So Rasakama it is. Welcome to ground school. First off, we're going to learn about the theory of flying before we step inside an aeroplane. I'm here to meet with Wakas, who's going to run me through. Hi Wakas, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. So tell me, so what are we going to be learning and what, how does the curriculum work? So in the ground schooling, the subjects which we are going to cover through are the aerodynamics, aircraft general knowledge, power, flight instruments, meteorology, air law, human performance and general navigation. These are the subjects that you have to need to know the knowledge before I release you to your flying phase. Ground schooling teaches you some of the important and critical elements of flying that you have to demonstrate in an exam before taking to the skies. So once you're done with ground schooling, it's time for the practical and to test out my wings. Uh, basically, once uh, we start with the training on LSA, uh, there's a, a total requirement of 30 hours, upon which uh, 23 hours are dual flying with an instructor and 7 hours are to be uh, flown solo by the student pilot and then they get a uh, pilot license, a light sports permit. My name is Haider Zaman and uh, I'm the chief flying instructor at Jazeera Aviation Club. Well, from the beginning, we start with the familiarization with the MBZ, which is the mandatory broadcast zone, the airspace where we fly in the training areas, and the general handling of the aircraft. The second phase starts when we start with the different type of maneuvers, 
uh, how to control the aircraft, how to climb, turn and descend. And in the third phase, we start with the uh, landings and takeoffs uh, in the circuit pattern, in the landing pattern. And uh, once uh, we are through with that, then we start making uh, it a bit more, raising the standard to make them proficient with emergency situations so that they can be capable of landing the aircraft in any uh, situation other than normal routine. These are small planes, but are they acrobatic? Because I've seen some planes that can do somersaults and twists and loops. See, uh, the aircraft, which comes with the such long straight wings and their slow speed, it won't be possible for much vertical maneuvers. Yes, but definitely uh, you can combine a little bit of maneuvering in that one uh, within the limit load factors, which is right here plus 4 G's positive 4 and negative 2 G's and that's too instantaneously because the aircraft will not be able to sustain that kind of uh, G load the speed will drop and of course then you'll have to release the back pressure 4 G's uh, is, but a, yes. is a lot though right it's, oh yes uh, so uh, horizontally you can turn around with the 70 80 degrees angle of bank you can combine it with a little bit of vertical but they're not meant for aerobatics Al Jazeera uh, Aviation Club has been around since 1998. People come here and fly for fun and for hobby. My name is Haris Raja. I'm the operational manager and uh, general manager of Jazeera Aviation Club, located in Ras Al Khaimah. So it started off as a recreational dream of the uh, one of our pioneer members who started it because they wanted a place to fly, and uh, it's it's one of the largest uh, club in the GCC. We're having around 72 aircraft right now. For training, we use the Aeropract A22 type. They are mainly single-engine two-seater aircraft. I am Dania Alaker, the marketing manager at the Jazeera Aviation Club. Now it was time to take my first flight. And I have to say, I couldn't have felt much more confident than even Fanas must have felt when he flew his first aircraft over a thousand years ago. But unlike him, I had Captain Hayden next to me to ensure that I was going through the right checks along the way. I love going to Dubai, Go, going to Dubai and coming back, you know, looking at Burj Khalifa, the World Islands, Atlantis, it's just beautiful, you know. But I also like flying in Ras Al Khaimah because it's uh, very peaceful, it's soothing and it's more, I would say, spiritual comparing to, you know, looking at the skylines and stuff. So th these are my two favorite routes personally, flying along the coast right before sunset and landing back in Ras Al Khaimah, that's, that's, the, that's the best part. Well, it really was daunting taking my first flight, but now I've got the buzz for it. And I've got 22 hours of coached flight time in order to perfect the skills needed to complete the course. One of the things I'd really love to do though, is to do a cross country course from Rasakama to Dubai. <laughs> And navigational phase I consider as the more more fun part because then you get to travel not only in Ras Al Khaimah, you're not flying just in Ras Al Khaimah, but you're going along, you're going to Dubai, checking out the skyline of Dubai, you're going to Abu Dhabi, you can land in Abu Dhabi as well. Uh, we also go to Fujairah.
guy in Dubai, uh, he's really good, the motor skills are good and uh, he's really close to flying a solo as well, so uh, we are doing very well with him. Flying is a very unique experience and at the moment we're the only club in the UAE. So we are the only place where you can enjoy flying all over the Seven Emirates and especially for ladies. Right now we're having more and more ladies as well, uh, subscribing and, um, and I'm really happy to see that. I have seen a guy in Dubai flying and uh, yes, he has the potential to become a pilot and yes, I'm sure one day I'm going to see him as a pilot over here. I'm going all around the UAE. Flying over Dubai was epic. Looking down at the cars stuck in the traffic jams that I'm usually stuck in and just flying right over it. Seeing my home, Palm Jumeirah and the World Islands was ecstatic. Whilst you're learning to fly, if it doesn't go perfectly straight away, don't beat yourself up too much about it because you're always learning. Any pilot that stops learning should probably stop flying because every time you go flying you'll learn something new. If Abbas Ibn Fanas could see me now and see how I kept his passion for aviation alive here in the Arabian region, I'm sure he'd be very happy. I can only imagine how the future of aviation will look, but what I do know is there'll be more from me. But for now, it's over and out. <laughs>